So welcome back guys to just getting our basics of Revit started so we can get uh, drawing and get designing. Um, next we're going to look at putting in some doors and some windows into our design. If we go to say door here um, and have a look at our options, it doesn't give us that many options. So what we want to do is we want to come and we want to load a family. Now here you'll find that Revit has all of these different um, banks or libraries of different um, options that come with the program. So for us, we're going to come in to doors and what we can do is um, choose sets or different designs of doors. So if I want to come in here and choose maybe that style and once that's loaded, you'll see that it gives me um, these double glaze or double glass options as well. So depending on how many you want, you can just use your tab key and highlight. Um, I might come down here and just go with um, single flush decorative. And then it gives me those options as well down the bottom here. So let's go ahead. And once you've selected your kind of doors, it gives you different sizes here, guys. Um, I've spoken at length about sizes in class, uh, the different options, metric conversions, etc. But for us, um, we just really want to put them in at this stage. So I'm going to start off with a nice single um, decorative. Now you can put these in in 2D or 3D. Okay, so. It gives you the sizes, you can load doors in, you can put them on different levels, etc. But just for now, um, I'm going to place a door right there. And then I'm going to come to my floor plan. And I can see that here's the door, and it gives me different options. I can either have it opening inwards, opening outwards, and which way the door swings, I can also change by just clicking on these arrows. So in 3D mode, Again, if I just come select the door, um, single flush, then it will allow me to put that in. And again, I can change the door. I can change which way it swings. But with those arrows, um, it gives me a lot of options as to what I can do. I can come up and have a look in my 3D sketch and I can see that I've put those um, doors in. Now it's pretty similar with windows. Again gives me some options here. Again I can come in, load some a family in if I want to, giving me some different um, options, casement, combination, double hung, fixed. The list goes on so you can also change the specific types. You can also change the widths and the lengths when you come in. Similarly, with all of these programs with AutoCAD, um, Inventor and Revit, you, you have a lot of options to go in and change things as you go along. So for me, I'm going to select this particular window down here. And it pretty much depicts now, interestingly, an important point to remember is that our window height usually corresponds with the door height. Again, these are your jobs or your designs, so you can do with that as you please. You can change the window height. You can load them externally. You can have them internally. Um, but as I said, I don't really want you guys to just have them in willy-nilly. If you come into that top view, you can see that your windows are loaded in. And then when we go to our 3D view, you can see all of our windows. Now, the different heights is a bit of a problem. You can also use a function to get them equally distance apart, which I will show you a little bit later on. So again, there's some of the basic um, 
drawing structures to get you going in Revit. And then if I want to come back in, I can go to my temporary hide, reset, and that will again close off that. If I come into my views, my level one view, I can see that this grayed out area is the floor plan that is on the bottom level um, or the ground floor level. If I click on the ground floor, you can see that it is a lot stronger. So all I'm doing basically there is having a look through that floor so I can see that ground level um, a little bit easier. If I want to go ahead and add some walls now to my next floor, we can um, have a go at that. So it's important to make sure that I'm on level one. I've got my walls again, architectural, structural. You usually find that architectural walls are more for decorative purposes or structural. But at this point, um, it doesn't matter as long as we're using that basic sort of 110 brick wall. Now, when we're selecting this here, you want to make sure that we're going to the height of level two. And again, I'm going to just get rid of this little basic offset apply that and um, then come in and construct some walls again I'm not putting much thought into this whereas you will because um, your house needs to be functional it needs to be um, it needs to have all of those things that are described in the um, task description and it needs to serve a need it needs to make sure that the need of the family or the home you're designing or the people you're designing the home for is is served you can see I'm a little bit short on that wall there okay so if I go into my 3d view you can see that suddenly we have some walls on that top um, section of the house um, and it gives us a, a pretty good indication of what's going on internally um, in a 3D sense. Again if we look, go to our floor plans there's our bottom floor and our next floor. Now you can see that the parts that are darkened are the walls on our second floor and the parts that are lightened are the walls on our first floor. So next we might have a look at our components. Now with our components it's very very similar to some of the other things that we've done here. Um, we've got a myriad of different options, desks, trees, just you know, you name it. So we can come in here again to load families and we can have a little bit of a look around maybe in our furniture, beds. Okay, I might put a bunk bed in. It loads it in there and there it is. So if I wanted to say put a bunk bed in this particular room right here, I might stick it on that wall. And I might also put one in this room for argument's sake. Again, no real rhyme or reason, just to have a look at the functionality. Then I can click escape twice, go into my 3D view, yep I want to save, thank you, and lo and behold there are my bunk beds. And that goes for all of our furnishings, our TVs, our um, dining tables, chairs, uh, the way that we've got everything set up, beds, our bathroom, um, all of those things are available readily in the Revit um, bank of furnishings under the component section there. So the same applies with all of our other fittings. For example, if I go in here and have a look through the load family stage, um, as I said, our doors. Let me go in here to plumbing. We're going to architectural fixtures and I might 
have a look at bathtubs. Bathtub freestanding. You can see there that there are the examples for all of those things we need. So I might just select that one. It should load up. And then I can go, come in here. And if this room was my bathroom, which is a very, very big bathroom, it's pretty trendy to have your freestanding bathtub um, in there. And then I might want to come in and load a family and go back to plumbing. Up here to architectural fixtures, water closets, domestic toilet 3D. Okay, I might stick him on the wall there. But as I said, guys, this is a really, really um, almost a sketch feature that I'm showing you thus far. Again, in our components, if we come in here and look at our families, there are many, many different things in here. Curtain wall panels, um, pipes, plumbing, as I said, railings, which I might show you a little bit later on. Um, a lot of it also is to do with structural um, bits and pieces. We're not really going to be delving at this point that um, deeply into using Revit. We're really just doing it for our um, our planning and looking at the different kinds of um, bits and pieces that we can come up with in terms of our house designs. So it's one thing to be just experimenting around at this stage, but as I said, um, by the end of this unit, I'll be expecting a lot more detail and a lot more um, thought in terms of the um, aesthetic views, especially externally, um, balconies, railings, stairs, and the like, which I'll be covering in the next couple of tutorials. We might just have a little bit of a, a look through. And again, if I want to, I can turn this. I'll select this wall and I'll go hide element. And we should be able to see Thank you, Mr. Bell. Our bathroom, which is down in there. There's our little tub and our little toilet. So I'll continue on with a bit more um, detail um, in the next tutorial. So thanks for watching.